A long time in the making with outstanding results, Barmaids delivers yet another excellent skincare formula. Simple ingredients, quick absorption, it's a healthy skin choice. ICE Serum is the perfect daily nightly eye treatment. With nourishing and protective antioxidants, this lightweight formula absorbs easily into the skin to deliver stunning results. ICE Serum is a powerful combination of natural ingredients which encourages skin regeneration, leads to tightening and toned skin due to astringent qualities, and contains potent antioxidants which help to slow down the visible signs of aging. Hi and welcome to Knitting Blooms. Today is Friday, March 29th. This is episode number 100. My name is Tina, also known as Blooming Knitter, and welcome to the show. Thanks so much for joining me today. I have a lot in store for you today. Um, not a lot to show you, but just a lot to share. I finally got to do the dyeing tutorial. Uh, the over dyeing tutorial which I am showing in this episode and I really had a whole lot of fun but we'll get to that in a few minutes. This weekend is going to be really busy for me because tomorrow is Steve's birthday and we are going to lunch with his parents and then Sunday's Easter and we're going to brunch again with his parents. <laughs> so it's going to be a busy weekend. Um, I know that I'm going to get my workouts in. I don't know how much of anything else I'm going to get done this weekend because, you know, going to lunch is right in the middle of the day. And that means that you don't really have a, a good chunk of time in the morning to get things done or a good chunk of time in the afternoon. It's right smack in the middle of the day. I kind of prefer to do dinners versus lunches, but brunch for Easter is what we're doing because... Um, Steve's parents have, they go to church on our side of town, so we're going to go right after they get done with church. And Steve just decided to go to lunch for his birthday instead of dinner, which normally we do dinners, but it was his choice. He, get to the, he gets to decide, so right smack in the middle of the day. So, like I said, I probably am going to get up early and work out in the morning and maybe get a couple of things done around the house in the mornings and then hopefully have all afternoon and evening to knit after we get done with our lunch. So that's what um, is going on this weekend. Um, this week I did get some knitting time, but I have been spending a lot of time this week on um, the Knittopia directory. I am trying to finish that up so that I can um, get, the, get it printed next week and bound and I just need to get everything compiled so that it's all the, the file is all ready for printing. And that takes a lot of time, especially um, just making sure that all the vendors have their ads in and making sure that everybody is included in the directory in one way or another. And then including the itinerary and all of that information. So that's been a big job uh, for me this week. And thankfully, I'm just about done. I have a couple of tweaks to do. And um, I'm still waiting on a couple last minute ads. And I'm sure that I won't have any problem getting that completed by, um, by Monday. So that I can get it printed um, starting next week. So that's been my week. I have worked on the Even Star this week. Um, in fact, I think I got, let me just pull out my iPad real quick. I think I got uh, five repeats done, or six. More than I expected, but I, I only worked on it Monday, or Tuesday, Wednesday, and yesterday. So I got all the repeats done during that time. Uh, oh, I got seven repeats done. So I think I did, like I said, I, I worked on it Tuesday, Wednesday, and yesterday. I did not work on it at all today. I was working on the, the um, directory all day today. Um, I'm not going to show you the Even Star this week because it's the same as last week other than a few more repeats. But I did get seven repeats done this week, which is a, a much um, further progress than I have in the last few weeks. Um, last week I think I only got two, and I think... The week before, I only did two. So just in three days this week, I got seven repeats done. And the reason that I got um, seven repeats done is because I want to start some new sweaters. 
and I will get to that um, what sweaters I'm going to start and everything after you watch the tutorial because it has to do with the tutorial so I so I did get some work on the even star I did a tiny 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 bit of spinning uh, I didn't do any spinning at the office this week um, just too busy with other stuff and I did a little bit of spinning last night at home but only because I had a short span of time and I didn't feel like pulling out the even star and I did I was sick of working on the sock I did work on my basic socks um, a little bit this week but probably only got about an inch done so other than that I haven't I don't really have any knitting to show you other than just telling you my progress this week um, so yeah, that's about it. Spinning and knitting. Not not too much progress, but more progress than previous weeks. So, um, I was going to draw the winners for the die along um, today because it's almost the end of the month. But then I got to thinking, um, we still have a whole weekend of March to go. And I think that maybe people will want to use this time to dye up some more stuff. So I'm going to leave the thread open through next podcast, which will be next Friday, hopefully. So you have more time to dye your dye stuff up and post it. Um, I did pick out the prizes, though, and I want to quickly show them to you. I have three prizes. Um, we have two skeins of sock yarn. We have the Knit Picks Bear um, in the Super Wash Wool and Nylon Fingering. Uh, one skein of that, and um, this this is my favorite my, my favorite sock yarn. This stroll sock yarn, my favorite sock yarn. Um, and then the second skein of um, fingering weight yarn is from Wool to Die For socks, and it's their Superwash Merino, and um, it is one full skein. It's about four hundred and some yards. I have to I have to do the math, but because this says um, two thousand yards per pound, but it's I think it's around four hundred yards. So that's the second prize, and the third prize is two skeins of the bear uh, Peruvian um, Highland wool, which I think is wool of the Andes, uh, worsted in the bear. So, and there's two skeins because this is, I think it's 200 yards, 220 yards. So, I wanted to give you two skeins so you can make some hat, a hat, and some mittens or something. I'm not sure. I don't do a whole lot with worsted um, hand-dyed, so, and I don't do a lot of hats and mittens. So, I don't really know how much yarn it takes to do a hat or mittens. I think that, I think you, want, you can make a hat. For, with 220 yards, but um, maybe you want matching mittens. So those are the um, the three prizes for the dialogue. So you do have until next Friday to post your um, your projects that you've dyed to enter to win a prize. We also have a barmaid's drawing this week, and the drawing was for two Big Love samplers, and I did the drawing already, and it was for, um, the winner was number 47, and that was Blonde 20 Fan, and her name is Jessie. So congratulations, you have won um, the two Big Love samplers, so get in contact with me, and I will send you that coupon code. And next week, we have um, another coupon for $15 off your order. So I will uh, put up a thread. In fact, I'm going to run that one for two weeks because next week we will have the drawing for the die along. And this way, um, we don't have too many drawings all in the same week. So the next one will be drawn in two weeks, which will be the week before I leave for Knittopia, which I think is, I don't know what day it is. It's like the 12th, I think. I want to say it's the 12th. So I will post that thread, and you can enter to win um, $15 off your order. So again, congratulations, Jesse, for winning this week's 
this week's drawing for the two big love samplers. Again, get in contact with me and I will get that in the mail to you. Or not in the mail to you, I'll email you the coupon code. Okay, well, this is going to be a really quick episode because now we're already to our tutorial. Now, I think the tutorial is about a half hour or so, so the overall show might be a normal length, but what I'm recording today is not that long. So, I did my over-dyeing tutorial um, last weekend. I just made time to make it happen. Um... I just really wanted to get it done. I was really excited about trying it, and I just made the time to do it. I didn't get much knitting done last weekend because the tutorial took me, although the tutorial might only be a half hour, it actually took me like four hours to complete because um, before, at the beginning, I start off with um, doing some samples, and then I dye the whole process, and... Um, each stage took quite a while. So let me let you go ahead and watch the tutorial and then I will come back. I will show you the finished yarn and uh, let you know what I'm going to do with it. So here's the tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to be doing um, some experimentation on some over dyeing. I have created some samples here. I have approximately I don't know, I, I just did about 20 wraps around my, um, my forearm. And I'm going to be trying to um, over-dye this. This is a kind of a, I can't really show you very well, but it's a bluish color yarn. And I am going to try and dye it so it's a little bit darker and more of a tonal um, hand-dyed effect. These are the colors that I'm planning on using, the jacquard colors. Um, I'm not sure how they're going to turn out or how it's going to work, but right now I'm just doing a, um, an experiment on these samples. I'm also thinking about adding in this turquoise a little bit, but I'm afraid that this color might be a little bit too bright. So I'm going to start with the turquoise with a very light um, base and then add these colors on top of that. So that is what my plan is um, in this process. I'm going to um, start mixing colors uh, to see how I like um, how the colors turn out. I have already mixed all my colors into these bottles and I have already soaked my yarn. These are my, um, these are my samples. I have my other yarn soaking over here. But right now I'm just going to experiment a little bit um, to find out how, what colors I like together. So I'm going to start with um, Jacquard Turquoise, which is this color right here. And I'm just going to add a bit of this to the... Uh, the water I have here. I think I'm going to start with 5 mLs because I'm just doing a small sample right now. Um, and I have no idea how this is going to turn out, so I'm just going to experiment. So, it looks like the dye didn't get or the it didn't get mixed up all the way, but that's all right. This is just practice anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and take one of my samples. I'm going to um, leave it wrapped up because the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to kind of kettle dye it, but I don't want, I want kind of different splotches of different um, colors for different places. So I'm going to kind of leave it um, a little bit wound up, but not all the way. So some of the areas might not get... Um, as much dye as other areas, which is exactly what I'm trying to accomplish in this um, process. Now turquoise is, I'm hoping, going to be the lightest color. I'm not sure. <laughs> we'll see how it turns out. And like I said, some of this hasn't dissolved, but it could just be that, that this color has been mixed for quite some time. 
So I'm going to put this in here. Again, I've already soaked it and it has been soaking in vinegar water. I'm going to need, I think, just a little bit more water in there. And then I'm going to put this in the microwave and cook it for about two minutes. So you will see that um, I dyed the turquoise and it came out a bit darker. Let me show you um, the original color. So it did come out a bit darker than the original color. This is the turquoise. And you can see that there's still quite a bit of dye in this water, which means that the five milligrams that I added to this bath did not get taken up completely. So when I dye my full batch of um, sweaters worth of yarn, I probably won't have to use as much as I think because there's still quite a bit of dye left in here. So my next step is going to be to dye um, with the teal, I believe. I'm going to go with the teal next. This is the next color. This is the next lightest color. And I think I'm going to go with that color next because um, I want to go from light to dark and try and um, have the dark color overlay the light but still have spots where there isn't um, dark color. So that's where I'm going to go next. So I'm going to twist this um, a little bit more than I twisted the last one. So there will be more um, spaces that don't have color. The last one really it came loose a little bit. I did not do it um, quite tight enough. And with these samples it's going to be a little bit different than with the um, full skeins because um, the full skeins are much larger and um, these samples are very tiny. So I'm going to make it a bit tighter you can see. So hopefully we'll have some spots where there is no color or no, no um, color of the teal. So now, because um, the five milligrams of the turquoise was still quite a bit, I'm going to do it. Go ahead and do five milligrams of the um, or milliliters. I'm sorry, approximately five milliliters of the teal. I'm going to put it in slowly so I can see how much color it's going to give me. I think I'm going to go with um, just two milliliters this time, because I think actually I think I'll go with three. So I think that that might be enough color. And what I'm going to do is, I don't know if you can see how this is only, um, there's some color, some more color in one area than another. I'm going to leave it like that. I'm not going to stir this up at all. I'm just going to drop my um, little skeinlet in where it is and let it do what it does. And then I'm going to cook this for another two minutes to uh, let this color set. Okay, so I did the um, the teal next, and it still, it got dark, it got um, much darker. Again, I can show you um, another bit. But what I'm finding is that, I don't know if it's just these little samples or what, but I don't know if, how well you'll be able to see it, but there's not much variation in color. And it could just be the samples, the smaller size samples. And I'm still going to go ahead and continue to um, experiment with this, but I think what's going to end up happening is I think I'm just going to have to do the whole lot and hope for the best. And at this point, I'm still very happy with this color, but it's still not as tonal as I would like or more hand dyed looking than I would like. So, and again, I still had quite a bit of dye in my water here um, after I heated this up. So I'm going to go ahead and continue with the, um, the spruce and also the, um, the purple jacquard. I might even just skip the periwinkle altogether. So we'll see how it goes. And um, I'll let you see each step of the process after I dye each color. Okay, I'm going to go with the spruce next. And because there's been so much dye left over in the baths, I am going to um, try and use less, less um, dye in this one. 
think I'm going to only go for 2 mLs if I can measure that out. So I only use 2 mLs on this one. And I'm going to, when I um, tie my little skinglet off, I'm going to twist it, but then I'm going to tie off, um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to twist it here, fold it in half, but then tie it um, and see how that works. I'm not sure how it will work, but we'll see make it, it's just going to be a little tiny little thing there. I don't know how much we'll get in there. And again, I'm not going to mix up um, the water. I'm just going to drop this in. And I will cook it for another, actually, I'm not cook, I stopped cooking it for two minutes. The two minutes was getting a little too hot. So I'm going to cook this for about a minute and a half. And I'm going to fill up the water a little bit more, I think, because it's not quite on the top. Okay. So I did go ahead and put another ml of um, dye in the pot in the uh, water because I did have to add so much more water to get it to go over that little knot that I made. Um, but obviously I did not need it because this dye, this water is still very um, full of dye. But I am starting to see a little bit more of some variation in this yarn, which is exactly what I was looking for. And this color is coming along fabulously. I really like how this is coming along. And I think I am going to go ahead and um, do the purple and um, then see how that comes out. Okay, so for the purple, I think I'm going to go ahead and go with the same 3 mLs of water. Um, or of dye, and this is dye that I've mixed up, so it's not really straight, straight dye. Um, uh, so, and what I did was I just used about a tablespoon of, of um, the dye powder and then put it in my jar here. And this color looks gorgeous. So, I'm going to do the same thing that I did with the spruce. I'm going to twist it and then knot it. Because um, I really, that started to show that um, we were getting some different variations in color. So, I'm going to go ahead and do that. Twist it and knot it. And it's going to be a little bit different because um, I had untwisted it and I'm twisting it again. So, there it is, another little knot. And I'm going to dump it in, and I'm just going to let it do its thing. I'm going to put it in the microwave for a minute and a half, or a minute and 35, and um, see how it turns out. Okay, so I'm starting to wonder if it's possible to get to a point where the fiber will not take up any more dye, no matter what color it is. Uh, because there's still quite a bit of dye in here. Now, I am seeing more variation with the purple, and I think that if it was darker, um, it would show up more. But I am still very, very happy with this outcome. And it makes me more apt to just go for a... Um, an over-dye without doing this experimentation, because this is almost identical to the color that I was looking for. I was looking for a kind of a, a medium teal turquoise color, and I think that's what I got here. Um, and again, this was the original. So you can see the difference in color. It's just, this is so much more my, my color than this um, lighter blue. So I'm going to go ahead and get set up to dye the full lot of, um, of yarn. And I'm not going to worry about dyeing the, the little skeinlets anymore because I got something that I'm very, very happy with. And I don't need to experiment anymore. So I will get set up for the, um, the full dyeing. And I will show you that process as well and every step of the way as I go through that. Okay, 
So here we are with the big pot. Now this is a pot that I use specifically for dyeing, so I do not use this um, with food at all. I got this pot um, specifically for this, this process, to be able to dye a sweater's worth of yarn in one pot. Now this part of the tutorial is gonna take much longer than the original within doing the samples because I have to heat the water up. And there's a lot of water in here. I think this is a 25 quart, 16 quart capacity. So there's a lot of water in this in here. So right now it is not hot, it is um, cold. And I'm gonna go ahead and add the yarn while the water is cold and then, and along with the, um, the dye. And then each time, if the dye does not get fully absorbed into the yarn, then I'm going to have to fill the pot again and start with fresh water, which means it'll take longer to um, heat up. So I'm going to start with, I used um, five mLs in the small container. Now I think I'm gonna go with 50 mLs. I have a, a much bigger syringe here. I think I'm gonna go with 50 mLs for this much larger thing. I don't know if there's gonna be a correlation to it, but because of how well my samples turned out, I'm okay with whatever I get because the samples turned out much better than I expected on the first try. So I'm gonna go ahead and use 50 mLs of dye in this bath here. And we're gonna hope that it works. So I'm just gonna squirt it in there and get it all around. And again, I'm not going to stir it. I'm just going to put my yarn in here um, on top of it. Okay, I have now twisted my skeins. I didn't do that before, but I did twist them. Um, the, this pot has already started to warm up. Um, because I put the dye in and then I realized that I had not prepared my skeins. And let me tell you, it's not that easy to twist wet skeins. So the pot is now not hot, but getting, getting warmer. Um, and I, have, I had it set on high to try and help get, get the temperature up, but now that I'm gonna add my yarn, I turned it down to about five because I do not want this pot to boil. And um, I'm going to put the yarn in and then I'm going to set a timer so that I can keep checking it to make sure that it does not start to boil. So I've got all my um, skeins um, tied up se semi-loosely and I'm gonna put all eight in at the same time. And I'm going to put them in from tip to tip, hoping <laughs> that when I try and pull them out, it'll be a little bit easier to get them out one at a time. So I'm gonna go ahead and just d drop them in and we'll see how it goes. Like I said, I'm going to set the timer for um, probably about 20 minutes, just so I can keep an eye on it to make sure that it doesn't start to boil. Um, I don't think I'm going to stir it at all because it did kind of mix up a little bit as I left it um, while I was winding my yarn up. And I'm not going to push this in. You'll see that some of the ends are up a little bit. Actually, I think I will push it in. Just tuck it down in there. Okay, and we'll uh, come back and see where we are in about 20 minutes. Okay, it's been about 35 minutes and the water is pretty warm. I'm going to uh, use some insulated gloves to take the uh, each skein out and uh, wring it out here. It's hard to tell at this point um, if there's any dye left in the pot. I'm gonna try and wring it out as much as possible and um, I'll take each one out and then I will um, come back and uh, we'll look at the water together. Okay, so I've taken the yarn out of the dye pot and the water still is quite, um, looks like it has quite a bit of dye in it. Now maybe 
it's it's not that much dye but I think I am going to start with some um, fresh water uh, before I do the next color which will be the um, spruce no I'm sorry it's going to be the teal so I will get that prepared and then I will be back to show you the next process okay I have all fresh water and as it turns out, um, the water wasn't as full of dye as I had originally um, thought it was. I think it's the color of the pan um, that was very deceiving. But I'm glad that I started with fresh water um, again this time. So I'm going to go ahead and um, add the teal. I am going to go ahead and use um, 50 ml of, or this is, this is cc's. I don't know if that's different than ml's. I think the other one is ML's, but I'm going to go ahead and use 50 um, cc's of this um, teal dye because when I use the same amount of dye in the previous, in doing the, uh, the samples, it seemed to work out fine. So I'm going to go ahead and continue that process uh, because I am using the same batch of dye. Um, I don't think that, I don't know that I will be able to reproduce this if I try, but I don't really need to reproduce it because um, this is an over dye process and I probably won't have this yarn again. Um, so I'm not, I'm not really worried about reproducing it. And again, I will just squirt it in there and let it get all around. And um, then I will add my yarn. First, I will turn the temperature back down again. I had, I had the temperature up higher so that um, it would warm up quicker. And um, my idea of at putting all the skeins in uh, from tip to tip really worked well last time, so I'm going to do that again. And I have rewound these yarn um, a little bit differently than I did the first time and um, a little bit tighter. So hopefully we're going to get the same effect like we had for the um, samples. So I'm going to go ahead and drop these right in. And this is the, um, the teal that we are doing now. The jacquard teal. And I will go ahead and just push that down a little bit. And I will let this, um, this heat up and cook for, again, probably about 35 minutes, uh, keeping an eye on it to make sure that it doesn't boil. Um, and then uh, we'll come back and take this one out. Okay, it's been about, um, about 30 minutes. And I'm going to go ahead and take the, um, the yarn out again. Again, remember, I am using insulated gloves to take this out of the water. Um, and even when I took it out of the water before using the insulated gloves, it was, stayed the, um, it was still quite hot even through the insulated gloves. So if you do not have insulated gloves, I highly recommend that you um, get some tongs or something to, um, to pull the yarn out of the water and set it on a tray um, at least until it cools down slightly where you can wring the water out because it is quite hot um, even through the insulated gloves. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this out and get some fresh water going and then we will put in the, um, the spruce which is next. Okay, now we are ready to put the um, the yarn in for the next batch. I have um, retwisted these and gently knotted them. I'll just kind of show you the knot, just so that oops, almost lost one off the edge. Um, just so that um, we have some different areas exposed. And um, what I did when I pulled it out of the batch the last time is that I laid it out flat to dry and it did dry very quickly so I could handle it a little easier without the insulated gloves after um, I wrung it out a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in. I have already added the 50 um, cc's of the spruce colorway, uh, same as how we've added all the other ones. And um, I'm ready to add this, add the yarn in. And I've, I've got all the yarn in a, um, a grouping again, just so that I can drop them right in. Here I go. 
and I'll immediately turn the water down as well because I had it on high. And it's going to immediately soak down and I will again set the timer for about um, 30 to 35 minutes. I will now take out the yarn um, after the spruce batch. Uh, this again I had tied in knots so I could have some splashes of color in different areas. So I will take all the yarn out um, and then we'll get reset up for the last um, color which is the jacquard purple. Okay so this is our last color and I have um, again re-knotted everything so that um, it has different areas exposed. I did um, use the same type of knot that I used last time, but I aligned it a little differently so different areas were exposed. And I have already put the dye in the pot, so I'm ready to drop these in, and um, this will be our last, our last um, color. So we'll see how it comes out um, in a few minutes. I will let it um, sit in here again for about um, 30 to 35 minutes and then we'll be back to find out what the final color is. Okay, we've just finished the final color and it's just coming out of the dye pot. So I will show you what the final outcome is. Now this will still be um, wet, but um, you can kind of get an idea of what it's going to look like. And um, it's very, very cool. When you take off, when you take out your knots, you just have to be careful not to um, get it all tangled up. But this is how it turned out. And it's even cooler than the, um, the sample that we did. So I am very happy with how this turned out. The purple showed up a lot more in this one than in the last in the sample. And I'm very excited about this. I can't wait to get them all out and dry and then be able to knit up a sample. Now, when I start to knit this up into a sweater, I will alternate skeins um, every two rows in order to uh, make sure that there's no pooling and also to make sure that um, you can't notice when I change to a different skein. So I'm very excited with this and I'm very... Um, I'm not going to be so apprehensive about um, over dyeing any in the future because this came out so cool. Um, yeah, so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me at bloomingknitter at gmail.com. And uh, thanks so much. Bye. Okay, so wasn't that fun? I so much enjoyed it. I think I enjoyed that process, that over dye process, more than any of the other dyeing that I have ever done. It was so much fun. It was like, you, you didn't have to think. You just did it. It was, there was no, there was no really, I mean, I had a, a plan. I mean, like I had the plan when I did the samples, the sample, but it just, you know, you, you don't, you can't control it when you do the kettle dyeing. And that's kind of what I liked. I liked that I couldn't control it. I was just letting it do what it was going to do. And I have to tell you that I love the outcome. It is absolutely amazing. Okay, so in the video I showed you the samples. Um, and I showed you the yarn, but it was wet. So I'm going to show them again. This is the samples that I did. And the bottom one is the original, um, the original color, and then this is the, the dye. Now, even with this tiny sample, you can't really see the color variation. And I don't, like, like I said in the video, I'm not sure if it's that the yarn could only absorb so much dye or what. But, let me show you the finished skein. Okay, so here is the full skein. Now, again, I don't know if it's just the color. I think it's this, this blue that just does not show up very well on the camera at all. But I'm hoping that you can see this variation in this yarn. I can't see it very well on the um, little screen. But, oh my goodness, this turned out 
absolutely gorgeous. I am so excited about it. I have to tell you that um, I will be much more apt to um, to do this over dye process again in the future, and I probably won't um, do any samples. I think that that kind of was a bit of a waste of a time waste of time for me. I was just nervous that I was going to make this huge mess and I was going to waste um, these, these skeins of yarn. Uh, but it is it, it was so easy and I mean there's so many times when you find good deals on um, on discontinued yarn or what have you and but maybe they don't have a color that you like but you could find a color that you could over dye and make it something that you like and so I am very tempted to be looking at D stash and sales and whatnot because this was fun definitely definitely something that I'm going to do again and I hope you try it as well so I hope you enjoyed that tutorial and um, it was fun now let me tell you what I'm gonna make with that yarn this yarn I was just so excited about this yarn when I pulled it out of the dye pots um, last weekend that I immediately started searching for a project. Now, you know that I had broken up one skein. I had bought, I got a bag that had 10 skeins in it. And I had broken up one skein to do the little samples. And um, so I only have nine skeins that I dyed. And let me show you, see if I can show you the, um, here's the original, the original, um, skein, what it looked like, and it died up. So I hope you can see that. It is just incredible. I just, I'm, I just love it. I am so impressed with this. I can't tell you how excited I am about this charm. Anyway, so I pulled this out of the dye pots. I hung it up to dry. And I'm like, I have to start a sweater with this right away. I mean, I didn't even want to wait for it to dry. I was that excited. I was trying to think of a way to dry this quicker. And I decided on the sweater that I'm going to make with it. And I'm going to knit the um, Coraline sweater. And let me see. It is by um, Isolde Teague. I think that's who it's by. Yep. And here it is. Let me show you what it looks like. It's going to be easier to show you this way. And this is that sweater. It is a cute little sweater, mostly stockinette. It's a stockinette. Oops. It's a stockinette body. And then they have some some um, detailed stitching for the yoke. And I think this sweater is going to be gorgeous. And it just so happens that um, this yarn that I, that I dyed was silky wool. And there's like 50, 50 sweaters that are made with silky wool. So I think that this will be perfect. And um, so I've picked out my sweater. But I do not want to start this sweater until I can get almost completed with the Even Star. Because like I mentioned last week, I know that if I start this sweater, I know that this yarn is going to be so fun to work with that I'm not going to finish the Even Star. I mean, I will eventually finish it if I started it, started this sweater now, but I need to finish it before Knittopia or in a, I need to get enough of it done so that I can finish it at the very latest the first weekend of Knittopia. But... I'm going to try not to cast this on. I don't even want to do swatches until I can get probably at least at least another week of, of working on the Even Star. I think I have, I, th I said I had 33 repeats and there's a total of 56. So I have another 23 repeats to go. And if I do seven in three days, I should be able to get a good chunk of it done by next week, and hopefully, maybe by next weekend, I will be able to um, 
to cast this on. But I also want to start another sweater too. Remember um, a couple weeks ago I showed you the yarn that I got from CJ Kopeck. This is um, something that I had her, hand, her special dye um, and I want to make a sweater with this. And the sweater that I'm going to make with this is um, Vanadium. And let me show you a quick picture. Oh, that's not a good picture. Let's see if there's a good picture, a full picture. Well, let me get the best one I can get. Hang on. It's a again, it's a very simple um, cardigan. And I go for the cardigans now because I get so warm. I need to I need to be able to take it off. So it's a, it looks like a three-quarter length sleeve, and it's just got a little bit of detail at the top. Let's see if I can zoom in, a, zoom in a little bit more. It's just got a little bit of detail at the top um, yoke, and it looks like it go the, the detail. Ugh, it's hard to hold and show you at the same time. And it looks like the detail goes down um, down the front a bit as well. I haven't really read the pattern, and but I think it'll be easy. But this is what I'm going to use with it. And I and for both of these sweaters, I will be alternating skeins because this is hand dyed, and even though the skeins are mostly the same, they're not going to be exactly the same. So I don't want to be able to see when one skein starts and one skein ends. So I will be alternating every two rows for both of these sweaters. But again, I do not want to cast on for these sweaters. And like I said, I don't even want to swatch because I know the moment I swatch, I'm going to want to immediately cast on. So I'm going to try and put it off. I'm going to try and get, I'm hoping I can get 10 repeats done on the Even Star this weekend. And then um, next week, my boss is on vacation for a couple days at the end of the week. And again, a couple days at the beginning of the following week. And I'm hoping that I will be able to finish the Even Star while he's on vacation before I leave for Knittopia. And then, and only then, will I be starting the new sweaters. <laughs> I really want to get started on them. Plus, I want, I want to start a new shawl for Knittopia. And my list for projects for Knittopia is growing and growing and growing. I don't know how I'm going to fit it all in those two bags that I said I was going to limit myself to. We'll see how that goes. So yeah, I'm so excited about starting these, and I hope you will give over dyeing a try. I have, I know I have at least two more um, sweaters worth of a color that's almost this color. This is the original, um, the original color of this yarn, and I have two more. Not this, not silky wool, but this color. Um, of two different types of yarn that I have that I think I will over dye. I probably won't try and get the same kind of color. I'm not sure what I'll do. Maybe I'll go for more of a greenish tone. Um, but I think that I need to stay in that green, blue, purple color family if I start with a blue. So I have two more of those. I have a purple um, Cascade 220, a light, like lavender shade of purple that I would like to over dye. Um, these are all things that I've purchased previously that like the, the one is um, Knit Picks Mainline. I want to make another tomato. Uh, and I bought this color because I think it was the, the yarn was being discontinued and I like the yarn. The color wasn't that great, but I figure I can make it work. But just think of the possibilities. I mean, there are color, there are yarns out there that none of the colors in their in their color fam, in their line of yarn may be something that you like, but you could use the over dye technique and make anything that you want. It's just, it just amazes me. I'm going to have so much fun with this, and it's going to really open up the possibilities of what yarn I can and can't buy, because there's, there's unlimited possibilities. So, <laughs> new sweater. It's going to be on the needle soon. 
the other driving force that I have, other than the two sweaters that I want to cast on immediately, but won't do it until Even Star is much further along, is a new game. <laughs> and actually, I thought it was going to be a problem, but at this point, it probably won't be a problem because I found out that the Mac version is not released yet. Now, there's still a, a, a possibility that the Mac version will come out before I leave for Nitopia, and if that's the case, I'm going to want to have some time that I can play it while before I leave for Nitopia. Uh, you want to know what the game is? Big surprise, right? <laughs> Sim City, the new Sim City. Now this is different than Sims 3. Sims 3 is controlling the people in the houses. You go to the bathroom, you go take a shower, you eat, you go to school, you work, whatever. Sim City is controlling the entire city. Now I have had previous versions of Sim City. I can't remember when the last version came out, but it's been probably eight, eight or ten years. And earlier this year, or maybe it was last fall, I saw that they were coming out with a new version. And you know that every time a new software comes out, it's going to be bigger and better than the last version. And I haven't been able to play um, the previous version of SimCity for quite some time because um, it was not available on Mac. So, I am very excited about getting to play this. Now, I ordered the um, game guide. I, I do that with most of my Sim games just because it's nice to have a little bit of insight of how other people play the game. And this is a, this is a big book. I mean, there's a lot of information in here about how to, um, to play, what, what each thing does, and so forth. So... This is kind of going to be my fun reading until the game comes out. And the game, the, um, the Mac version is due to come out sometime, it just says spring of 2013. Now, I have to tell you that I did order the, um, the, the, the download. I ordered it, I downloaded it, and actually I didn't download it. I think you had to download... Um, a download agent. I did that, but then when I went to go download it to my computer, I found out that it was only PC version, which is odd because they had the Mac version information, which is what I looked for to make sure that it was Mac compatible. And after I ordered it and paid $80 for it, I found out that the Mac version wasn't out. Now they told me that I could just wait, and as soon as the Mac version was out, it would become available automatically. I wasn't really buying that, so I did end up getting a refund for the PC version, and then I'll just repurchase it when the Mac version comes out. So I'm really excited, but I ordered this the same day that I, I um, got the download, and um, just so I can start reading up on it. It's been difficult because I read about it, it's like, oh, that sounds fun, oh, that sounds fun, and then I can't do anything with it, so... It looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. There's there's all sorts of um, scenarios and um, what do they call them? Um, disasters. <laughs> Your town can have disasters. Aliens and tornadoes and meteors and just all sorts of disasters. So I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And it's supposed to be an online game. And uh, I can't wait to get it. So hopefully I can get that even start on. So if it does come out before I go to Nitopia in the next two and a half weeks, I will have um, time to play it. So. Okay, so that's all I've got for you this week. Um, I have an evening ahead of me. And I'm planning on knitting. Hopefully the cats will leave me alone because I can't work on the even star for instance, when Sammy wants to sit on my lap because she will snag that thing before I even know it. 
So as soon as she decides that she wants to sit on my lap, I've got to put it away. So I'm hoping that I can at least get a repeat or two done before she wants to cuddle up with me. And um, if not, then it'll have to wait till I get back to work because that's where I've been doing most of my um, progress on the Evening Star is at work. So anyway, I hope you guys have a great weekend. I hope you have a happy holiday. And I will talk to you next week. So, bye for now.